the artists who are moving with money to Yasin's family. You see, ladies and gentlemen, as we speak now, we must know that since the regime has nothing else to tell people, they are embarking on buying them. If they cannot intimidate you with bullets, they will throw money at you. They, they, they can't believe that somebody can actually speak to people and they listen without bribing them because they are used to bribing. Their system of patronage is all they know. So every time they see somebody communicating to people, they instantly get convinced that that person had to bribe them. And that explains um, why the president is moving from, to, from ghetto to ghetto, taking money to young boys and girls, young people from the ghetto, and actually all the people who, pose up, who come off as ghetto youth, um, <laughs> hoping that that will change their mindset. The president needs to know that these people have been suffering for the last 32 years, and giving them handouts today is not going to solve the situation. You know, it is not a matter of him bribing them to support him as the president. It's a question of him letting the institutions work and actually come up with an institutionalized solution that goes beyond President Museveni. Because what we need is not just survival for today. We need solutions that are everlasting. Um, that go giving money, I mean, you cannot buy somebody's life for 20 million shillings, guys. Let us have some respect for people's lives, okay? You cannot shoot down somebody's son, somebody's husband, somebody's father, somebody's hope, and then you think that you're going to give them 20 million and they keep quiet. They sweep, sweep all, it, all that under the carpet. Yes, we are broke. We know that. Yes, we need the money. We know that. But we need justice more than the money. Because so many people have died in the same conditions as Yasin Kauma. And so many people will continue to die if we only keep quiet after being bribed. So to the fellow artists, with all due respect, I think we should borrow the words of the great legend from northern Uganda called Okot, Okot Bitek who said we artists are supposed to be the mirrors of society. We are supposed to reflect what happens in society. We depend on love, we depend on those people, especially the common people. So let us not continue to be used to oppress those people, continue used, being used to bribe those people. You, can, you, you cannot buy somebody's life. And yes, you cannot buy silence of the people. I want to reassert it that we are together with the family of Yasin Kaoma and all other colleagues that have been extrajudicially killed, and we will follow up their matter to the end. They will not keep quiet, and we shall not keep quiet, no matter what level or what rate of bribery. Um... My sister there asked uh, what my legal team is doing. Our legal team is following up on all these cases. And they will not relent until everything has, uh, until they've gotten to the bottom of this. We are following up. We want all the perpetrators of the uh, torture, all the members of the security forces who murdered our people, we are following up on them here in Uganda and internationally, and we must come to the bottom of this. And yes, our legal team continues to follow up on the cases of colleagues that have been incarcerated to see that we secure their freedom. Um, in Parliament, our colleagues are still articulating the issues, and as soon as I'm better, I will get back to the floor of Parliament. Well, as we know, that the ruling party has the majority of the members of parliament. And yes, like I've said it before, I'll say it again, that our parliament has many times been reduced to a mere talk show. I want to remind you that the people power idea 
has proved much, much stronger. And uh, again, I want for the, I don't know if it's the 10th time, to remind Ugandans that actually everybody is as important as a member of parliament. So we must do this as Ugandans. So far, the tests that have come out have given me hope, although I'm still awaiting on other tests on my blood, considering the toxicology uh, fears that I had. And uh, that uh, I will release not now, uh, because uh, it is still as uh, sensitive uh, as per the advice of my doctors. Uh, my brother asked uh, whether I had met President Museveni because there were rumors that I had met President Museveni. I have not pre met President Museveni. What was mattering is uh, my freedom to travel and get treatment, and that's what I got. And I'm a very transparent person. I'm not saying I'm disrespecting him, but I don't do things undercover. Whatever I do, I do not just for me, but for those people that think like me and those people that feel represented by what I do and what I stand for. So I did not meet President Museveni. And my brother um, also asked, that's the one who asked four questions. He said government uh, officials have been uh, attacking us and are claiming that people power does not have structures. Now it uh, surprises me how somebody fighting against you can be aiding you to win the battle. Like I said, um, this is an idea. An idea that falls in this time. So we are not looking at structuring, or even if we do structure, we are not intending to expose ourselves to the regime. The regime is so desperate. They want us to operate the way they understand. Some of them have actually reached out to some of my colleagues, advising us to establish ourselves as a political party or as a, or as a political entity. They want us to shape up in a way easy for them to handle. And you are telling them we are doing it, like Bob Marley said, in a rubber dub style. <laughs> yeah. For us, we operate in a way they don't understand. The regime has always been claiming that I'm a sellout to the West. And that is why maybe the West is keeping its eye on us. I want to remind you that when President Museveni was struggling, or purportedly struggling, for freedom, he was friends with the international community. We have ambassadors all over the world because we are relating with the country, we, 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 with the other countries. <coughs> President Museveni always claims that he's trying to um, create peace so that investors can freely come into the country. That is all inviting um, foreigners into our country because we know that we are members of the international community. This is a global village. And yes, we long to one day proudly sit on the table of nations as a conscious and as a credible nation. So we would continue to want to relate with the, inter with the international community. It is uh, disturbing for the regime to call me a sellout when you Ugandans, fellow Ugandans, you saw President Museveni and his wife and his brother-in-law, you know, discussing business on behalf of our country, if they call me a sellout, I don't know what I should call them. So I must remind you that this is a genuine indigenous struggle for our liberty. When the government of Uganda has nothing else to tell its citizens, it is going to come out with any cheap lies. But I am somebody that has grown up in the public eye. Those who claim that I am being sponsored by homosexuals, you have heard me speak, not just now, but over time. 
please refresh the minds of those people and let them know who Bobby Wine is and who he, what he stands for.